So in this video, we are going to be talking about the skeletal system and this is the model I am going to be using. The skeletal system is the framework of bones, cartilages and ligaments that protect and support the body and also help in the formation of blood cells, which is called hemopoiesis. Now, we have two major types of skeleton. We have the appendicular skeleton and we have the exoskeleton. Of course, you know that the total bones in the human body is 206. Now, if you divide the exo and appendicular skeleton, you have 80 bones for the exoskeleton, while we have 126 bones for the appendicular skeleton. Now, we have various functions of the skeleton, which include protection, blood cell formation, which is called hemopoiesis, storage of minerals, fat storage, shape and posture, including movement. Like I said, we have the exoskeleton and appendicular skeleton, and we are going to discuss that. The exoskeleton is made up of 80 bones, while the appendicular skeleton is made up of 120 bones, 26 bones. Now, going over to the exoskeleton, the exoskeleton, what makes up the exoskeleton is the skull, the ribs, the sternum, the hyoid bone, and the vertebral column. If you calculate all the bones here, we should have a total of 80 bones, which make up the exoskeleton. Now we can calculate. For the skull, we have a total of 28 bones. That is the bones of the skull you are seeing here. Just the skull, we have a total of 28 bones here. The skull is divided into the cranial bone, which is the bone that protects the brain. The facial bones, which is the bone that protects the face or the bone of the face. And as well, the ear ossicles. Inside of the ear, of course, you know, we have the outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. In the middle ear, we have what we call the ear ossicles, which are the bones of the ear and it includes the malleus, the incus, and stapes. So these are the tiniest bones in the human body. So it might surprise you to know that we have bones in the ear, which also helps in hearing. So going over to the cranial bone, the cranial bone, that is the bone that protects the brain, we have a total of eight bones of the cranium. We have the frontal bone, we have the occipital bone at the back. Here is the occipital bone. Then we have the two parietal bones superiorly, the occipital bone is located at the back of the skull, which is, means it's posterior. If you, if you remember the anatomical terms, we have superior, we have anterior, we have uh, lateral, we have medial. So occipital is posterior. The two parietal bones is superior, meaning that it's lying on top. Then we also have the, I've mentioned the, the frontal bone. The frontal bone is lying anteriorly, meaning that it's at the front. Then we have the two temporal bones that are at the back of the ear here. We have the two temporal bones, which are lying laterally. Then we have um, two other bones of the um, cranium, which include the sphenoid and the ethmoid bone. The sphenoid lie in the skull floor, while the ethmoid bone lies um, at the roof of the nasal cavity. Now, the frontal bone is one, the parietal bone is two, the occipital bone is one, the temporal bone is two, then the sphenoid and ethmoid bone are one bones each. Now this gives you a total of eight cranial bones. Now going over to the facial bones, we have a total of 14 bones in the face. That's the bones of the face, they are made, they are made up of 14 bones. Now we have um, two nasal bones. We have two nasal bones, um, that's at the roof of the nose. We have two lacrimal bones. We have the maxillae, two maxillar bones. We have the mandible, we have the vomer. We have the two zygomatic bones. I don't know if I've mentioned the lacrimal bone. Then we also have the inferior nasal concave. Now, if you calculate all the bones of this face, the zygomatic bone is the cheekbone. That is the bone at your cheek here. It's made up of two bones. The maxilla is made up of two bones here. We have the mandible. The mandible is the only movable bone of the skull. Yeah, meaning that all the bones here don't move. It's just the mandible that can move. So it can allow you to chew, to talk. So the mandible is just a single bone that is located below the jaw, that is the lower jaw. Now, in the bones of the face, um, we have the ones that are paired and we have the ones that are unpaired. The voma and the mandible are unpaired, meaning that they are just one, one bone. So the mandible is one bone, the voma is one bone. Why other bones of the face are made up of um, two bones each? That is the zygomatic, the lacrimal, the nasal, um, ETC. Now, I didn't mention the palatine bone. The palatine bone is also part of the um, facial bones. Now, if you calculate the 14 facial bones to the 8 cranial bones, we should have a total of 22 bones, if I'm correct. Remember I said that we have 28 bones of the skull, remaining 6 more bones, which are the ear ossicles. Each ear has 3 bones, 
that is the right ear and the left ear we have three bones in each of them so that is the malleus the incus and stapes which are found in the middle ear so if you add it to the um bones of the skull we should have a total of 28 bones of the skull now remember i said the exoskeleton is made up of 80 bones we still have some bones left now there is a particular bone that is located below the neck which is called the hyoid bone there is a fact about that is below the neck here or oh, sorry below the tongue which is called the hyoid bone this is the only bone that stands on its own it has no attachment to any other bone of the body that is the hyoid bone so if you add it to the 28 bone we should have a total of 29 bones now the remaining bones include the sternum. We have a sternum here. This is the breast bone. It's made up of just a single bone. So if you add it to the 29 bone, we should have a total of 30 bones. Now, the next bone we should be talking about here is the ribs. We have 12 pairs of ribs on each side. We have 12 ribs that are um, on each side. So we have a total of 24 ribs. There is something I did not mention. The exos For you to know the exoskeleton, the exoskeleton is the one that lies on the central axis of the body the exoskeleton it lies on the central axis why the appendicular skeleton is just like an attachment to the exoskeleton so we have the bones of the ribs the, we have 24 bones of the ribs that is 12 at the right side 12 at the left side so if you add the 24 bones of the ribs we should have to so the 30 bones we should have a total of 54 bones so now going to the posterior back to the posterior side of the body which is at the back there is a bone called or there are bones called the vertebra column that is bones that make up the vertebra column and this includes the cervical vertebrae at the neck the thoracic vertebrae the lumbar vertebrae the sacrum and the cossex. now if you calculate all the bones of the vertebra column we should have a total of 26 bones if you add the 26 bones to the 54 bones we should have a total of 80 bones now the cervical vertebrae seven bones make up the cervical vertebrae why 12 bones make up the thoracic vertebrae five bones make up the lumbar vertebrae now the sacrum the sacrum has a total of um, five bones but the bones are fused together to form a single bone and the cortex which is the which is also called um, the caudal vertebrae that is the tailbone has um, four bones that are fused together to form a single bone if you add the seven bones of the cervical plus the thoracic that is the 12 bones of the thoracic plus the five bones of the lumbar plus the single bone of the sacrum because the um, five bones have been fused to one then plus the single bone of the um, corset which are four bones that fused to one we should have a total of 26 bones so all this beginning from the skull down to the corset make up the exoskeleton remember i said that the exoskeleton has to do with the central axis of the body central then any other bones attached to this um central axis of the body is called the appendicular skeleton just like a mosquito or an insect um, they have what we call appendages appendages are attachments to their um, internal or to their central axis so going over to the appendicular skeleton which is a total of 126 bone we have what we call the shoulder ghetto and the pectoral ghetto the shoulder ghetto is where we have attachment of the upper lens which is the right hand on the left hand why the um, pelvic ghetto is where we have attachment of the lower lens, which is the right leg and the left leg. So let's calculate all the bones of the appendicular skeleton. So we have the pectoral ghetto, we have the two clavicles, that is, it's also called the collarbone, that is bones here, it's prominent, if you can feel it. We have two clavicles, then we have two scapular bones, this is what we call the shoulder plate. The two scapular bones, we call it the shoulder plate. Now the pectoral ghetto, four bones make up the pectoral ghetto, which is the two clavicles and the two shoulder blade or scapula which are posterior to the um, body now these are the four um, pectoral ghetto now we still have a total of um, 122 bones left now, we have the right arm here and we have the left arm so the right in the right arm we have a total of 30 bones while in the left arm we have a total of 30 bones as well so now let us calculate it all together the humerus is the bone we have here we also have the radius and the honor the radius is the one that is pointing at the tomb just like this we have two bones here there is bones below the elbow we have the radius here and we have the honor here so this is now three bones now we have the wrist bones which are called the kappa bones we have a total of eight kappa bones here these are tiny bones located at the wrist we also have the metacarpal bones that is the bones here at the palm 
we have five metacarpal bones at the palm and the um, palm we have one two three four five now we also have the phalanges that is the finger bones we have a total of 14 bones of the phalanges we have um one two three at the tomb four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve um thirteen fourteen so these are the bones of the phalanges so adding the humerus which is one here the radius one the ulna one the carpal eight the metacarpal five and the 14 phalanges we should have a total of 30 bones in the on the right in the right arm sorry now this is the same um, number we should have in the left arm we also have a total of 30 bones at the left arm which is the humerus the radius the ulna the um, metacarpals the carpals and the 14 phalanges so remember we calculated a total of um, four bones that are from the pectoral gedo we calculated that of the um, clavicle which is two bones the scapula which is also two bones now adding this 60 bones of the right and left arm that is the upper limbs and the four bones of the um pectoral gedo we should have a total of um 64 bones right remember we are trying to calculate um for the appendicular skeleton which is a total of 126 bones now we also have the pectoral gedo sorry the pelvic gedo we have the pectoral gedo and we have the pelvic gedo in the pelvic gedo we have two bones which are called the hip bones these are the two hip bones we have at the pelvic ghetto. So if you add the two hip bones at the pelvic ghetto, we should have a total of um, 66 bones. Now we have like 60 more bones left for the appendicular skeleton. Now let us go over the lower limbs. I believe the lower limb should give us a total of 60 bones. That is from the right and left lower limbs. Now let us calculate. Now going over to the lower limbs, we should have 30 bones at the right leg and 30 bones at the left leg as well. So that we have the femoral bone. This is the longest bone of the body. That is the femoral, the bone at your thigh. So we have one femoral. We have one patella. This is the bone at the knee, the kneecap. That is the patella bone. So it's made up um, of it's made up of um, sesamoid bone. The bone we have at the patella is called the sesamoid bone. So we have one femoral, one patella. Then we have the um, tibia and the fibula. This is the tibia. And this is the fibula. Let me use this to describe. This is the tibia, Why this is the fibula. Just like in the upper lens, we have the radius and the ulna. So in the tibia, we have the tibia is the one that is pointing to the big toe, while the um, fibula is the one that is lateral to it. So one femur, one patella, one tibia, one fibula. Now we have what we call the tarsal bone, just like in the wrist, we talked about the carpal bones. So the, the bones are the um, leg here at the ankle region we call it the tarsal bones and the bones that make up the tarsal bones are seven so we also have the metatarsal bones that is the bones here we have the metatarsal bones we have five metatarsal bones we have one two three four five then we also have 14 phalanges that is the ones at the leg we have the 14 phalanges so if you add the one femur bone one patella one tibia one fibula one um seven tarsal bones um, the five metatarsal bones and the 14 phalanges we should have a total of 30 bones in the left leg so the same applies to the right leg we also have a total of 30 bones at the right and left leg now adding the 60 bones of the right and left leg to the um, 66 bones of the upper limbs the pectoral ghetto and the pelvic ghetto we have a total of 126 bones of the appendicular skeleton now we have succeeded in calculating all the bones of the skeleton that is for the exoskeleton which is one that forms the central axis and the appendicular skeleton which is the one that attaches to the um, exoskeleton now the skeleton like i said it has a lot of function in the body for movement shape and position um, blood cell formation yeah this bone is what actually helps in the formation of blood cells when one becomes an adult and the blood cells will have of course the red blood cells the white blood cells the erythrocyte, um, the thrombocyte so the process of formation of all this type of blood cell is called hemopoiesis. So particular, let's be uh, more uh, specific. It, if it's for the red blood cell, we call it erythropoiesis. So you can either say that the um, skeleton play a role in erythropoiesis, that is the production of the red blood cell at the bone marrow. So if you have any question as regards to the skeletal system, you can drop it in the comment section. I promise to reply to them. Thank you very much.